Welcome to section 4.2, day 2, and we're going to begin by looking at how to experiment badly. Well, many lab experiments use a design like the one in the online SAT course example, where you begin with experimental units, you apply a treatment, and you simply measure the response. Well, this is you know kind of a bad experiment, um, but in lab environments, uh, you know, simple designs like this can work well. But when you're dealing with field experiments and experiments with animals or people, uh, there's a lot more variable conditions that you need to control or be aware of. So outside of a lab experiment, badly designed experiments often yield worthless results because of confounding. And in a lab, we can uh, reduce or not, not eliminate all those other lurking variables. The remedy, so in other words, how do we experiment well? The remedy for confounding is to perform a comparative experiment in which some units receive a treatment and then similar units, that's the key there, is the similar units receive another treatment. Most well-designed experiments compare two or more treatments. But comparison alone isn't enough. Comparison alone isn't enough. If the treatments are given to groups that differ greatly, bias will result. So what we need to do is when we make these different groups is to make sure that these groups uh, are alike. And the solution to that, uh, to that problem bias is simply do random assignment to randomly assign people to each of the two or more groups. So in an experiment, random assignment just simply means that experimental units are assigned to treatments using a chance process. Here are the basic principles of experimental design. There are four parts to this. Number one, you must have comparison. Uh, so use an ion that does compare two or more treatments. You should have random assignment. Uh, so uh, using a, ch a chance procedures to assign these experimental units to the treatments. So when we're, when we're assigning people to these two or more experiments, again, do it randomly. It helps create roughly equivalent groups of experimental units by balancing the effects of other variables among the treatment groups. So each group will have some of those other lurking variables in it. Control. Okay. What we need to do is keep other variables, those other lurking variables, from confounding our experiment. So that's where a lab experiment is really, really good it's because we can do all those things. We can control all of those pieces and reduce, if not eliminate, all of the other lurking variables. And then four, you must have replication. Okay? So you've got to use enough experimental units in each group so that any difference in the facts of the treatments can be distinguished from chance differences between the groups. So in other words, what they're kind of saying here is with replication is that uh, when you're assigning uh, 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 experimental units or subjects to the different treatment groups, just make sure you have enough of them, you know, a small number. Uh, some of the differences you would see might just be based on just uh, the small number you have and just got two wildly different people in a group. So the more the better. So in a completely randomized design, the treatments are assigned to all the experimental units completely by chance. Okay. Those treatments, again, are assigned to all experimental units completely by chance. Some experiments may include a control group uh, that receives an inactive treatment, an inactive treatment or an existing baseline treatment. Okay, so maybe receives an inactive treatment, sometimes referred to as a placebo, or an existing baseline treatment. So maybe somebody's, oh, you know, everybody's all taking aspirin, um, and then now, uh, now we're going to test a different uh, drug while everybody is still taking or has taken aspirin. 
So a good experimental design will take the experimental units, randomly assign them to uh, at least two different groups. Group one will get a treatment, and group two will get the other treatment. And then we compare those results. This is a really, really good, simple, uh, comparative uh, design uh, that employs completely randomized design. Okay, we'll pick up with this next section on our next video, but you should have enough information now to be able to do the problems here from section 4.2, day 2, numbers 57, 59, 61, 63, and 65. All right, we'll see you at the next video.